a Pika powered let's play. Hey guys, I'm Dio Gen Z. Welcome to my let's play. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Trico. Well, actually, I'm not. You're actually a dick and you are blocking the bridge. But now he thinks that uh, he can win at Bulbasaur's Daring Dash. So, alright. Let's play Chase. You know what they say. Make enemies friends, friends enemies. No, don't make friends enemies. That's bad. But uh, you are watching my Let's Play of Poke Park Wii. Watch out, Bondly. Uh, Pikachu's Adventure. And on the last episode, this very Trico here that we are racing and now, just by bashing into, have befriended. It's basically all you have to do around here in Poke Park is just bash into people and they will become your friends. Also, electrocution is a great way to make new friends. Remember that, kids. Ever move to a new area? Just electrocute somebody. Break out the taser and they'll think, Oh, this is Poke Park Wii, isn't it? I see what you're doing. You're like Pikachu. Either that or they'll call the cops. I don't know. It's a gamble. Now, this Pokemon here, Leafeon, is one of the evolutions of all the meadows. And all the evolutions are of all the meadows. I said that wrong, but what I mean to say is that there's an evolution found in most every zone. I don't know if it's in every zone, but in many zones. And when you find an evolution in one of the zones, uh, for this one, meadow zone, you find Leafeon. No brainer there. But once you do, you have to have made a set amount of friends within this particular zone, whichever it'll be, whether it's meadow zone, beach zone, whatever. So they won't become your friend or even try to attempt a skill game with you until you have, say, 20 friends. So the evolutions in this game are the most stuck-up Pokemon out of all. I think it's kind of funny, you know, having the, uh, of course, the Pokemon company, they would know best what the Pokemon's temperament and dispositions would be, but it's really funny to see them have character in this game. I think I said this in probably the first episode, but I really love that this game gives me a true perspective of what it's like to be a Pokemon. In so many past games, you had kind of the pseudo-perspective of a Pokemon. Pokemon Rumble on WiiWare, where you just got to smash and smash and smash. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, which was fun but had limited movement, and it felt just more like a grid chaser than anything else. And you had other controls in Pokemon Channel, and... You could even control Pikachu and Smash Bros, which definitely had its uh, fun parts, but Pikachu lost its uh, appeal to me when I found out that people do Pika Spam, and anybody who sees you with a Pikachu automatically thinks you're a Pika Spammer. I always used to rag on my best friend about that for uh, using Thunder all the time. But Pokemon Trainer sure is awesome to control. But this game, Poke Park, it really gives you the true perspective of what it's like to be a Pokemon. I only wish that I could have more options than just controlling the main character as Pikachu. But they are trying to tell a narrative here, so I can appreciate it. And these white white trees is about what bleh, about to say white cheese. Some white Swiss, but white trees are able to be headbutted, and when you do, Pokemon can fall out or berries. That's pretty cool because that's kind of a take from the main RPG series when you headbutt trees, things fall out of them. Actually correlates pretty well with my Pokemon Crystal walkthrough. You think I'm slow, don't you? Hehe. <laughs> Do you want to play Chase? Hmm. What does this Caterpie have up its sleeve? Does it secretly have nitrous? It does... Really? You lied to me! Nice job! See, like I said, electrocution, great way to make friends. Because if you can electrify them, and they're stunned, and you're, then they're paralyzed, there's no way for them to leave you! Ha 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 ha! Lop off their legs, and they'll be your friend forever! Yeah, don't do that. Okay, so Butterfree appeared. And I think you can kind of see a trend in what friends appear, based on what Pokemon you defeat in a skill game. So we just defeated Caterpie there, which was kind of a joke. And I don't know if you'd um, challenge him again, if he'll get stronger. And right there, my batteries... I just had to make a jump cut there. Right now, my... Um, or right back there. My batteries died. Or uh, got flung out. I was pressing the one button too hard. So I'm going to have to find a battery. A new battery back. Because what happened is that little tab that you pull up to change the batteries, it's been so worn out that it just falls off. So... 
But uh, my crappy Wii Remote aside, it's Butterfree, a unique chase. So you can see that even flying type Pokemon, such as Butterfree, or Pokemon with the ability to fly, uh, you can have unique chase type experiences. I think it's pretty cool that the game mixes it up. It doesn't just force you into one thing. You don't have to always play chase. You don't always have to battle. You know, there are unique things to do. Other than uh, exploring the world, which I think is just wonderful. This whole place looks so colorful. The Pokemon animations look so vivid. I really think that they did their own render jobs for this specific game. I don't think these are Pokemon Battle Revolution models or anything like that. It looks like uh, sincere work on the de on the uh, developer's part, and I appreciate that. Okay, so we are getting into a battle now with Mankey. All right, so with some opponents, you can't actually just rush into them. We got kind of lucky there because Mankey has a rushing attack too. I don't know if it's because it's a smaller Pokemon or not. But uh, other Pokemon that we battle, it is not wise to rush directly into them. And that's also cool about the battle system, is a big difference from Pokemon Rumble, which has you just spam the 2 button or spam the 1 button, is that you actually have to use a little bit of strategy. You have to jump around, you have to double tap on the D-pad um, to go... Oh, sweet, Chimchar. But you have to double tap on the D-pad to uh, do a quick dash side to side do a dodge but some things can't be dodged some things are better jumped some things are better dodged and some things some pokemon are just better being rammed straight into it's all things that you have to experiment with and we sure will be in this let's play i like to use the learn uh, i used the can't even speak today i like to use the term let's play in this case because you know i'm just playing this game for fun and uh, now that I have the ability to bring you guys some high-quality recordings as I do, I really want to share the experience. I figure, you know, if I'm going to play this game, I might as well record it as, I, um, as I'm playing it. And the only difference is I have to talk whilst playing it, which, you know, it's not such a big deal. It's basically like talking to myself, but knowing that on the other end of it, see, beat Apom, get Ambipom over to the party. You can see the trend there. But uh, I always just have to remind myself that I'm not talking to myself. I'm not crazy. I am playing with all you people on YouTubes. It becomes a much more visceral experience when you guys all comment back on it and share your own. Say you played this game or not, or you're looking into it, then uh, it's always great to hear where everybody's at with it. it makes it less of a uh, psychotic, lonesome experience of just talking to yourself in your room while you're playing a video game it makes it more of a community experience which is good you know that definitely would not have been achieved without the internet and now we have to play hide and seek with Odish and of course he's gonna do a signature move of going into the ground which I think if you read his early Pokedex entries from even games like red blue and yellow it said that Oddish go in the ground during the daytime and come out during the night, in the moonlight. I don't believe we can go this way yet, because I think beyond here is another zone. Okay, yeah. See, we still haven't even figured out why these zones are so restricted and why Pokemon aren't even allowed to play on attractions. It's just recently that we're kind of reigniting this Poke Park's spring and spunk. Because Venusaur, who I guess lives past these doors, somebody pissed in his Cheerios, and now he is closing down the attractions. So, Krogunk, loving his movements there. Very funny, very tune-like. I don't watch the anime, but I have seen some funny YouTube clips of him uh, poison-jabbing Brock whenever he is uh, being chauvinist or something. Not even that, just being a dog, whatever you want to call it, but uh, I really like what they've done with him. He looks great in this game. But he is in our way. And he's taking our berries. What a douche. Just trying to scam us off berries. Scam berries off of us. Oh, okay. Alright, you'll give us a tip. Yeah, I know that. I already gave that tip. See, it's redundant to read what they say. 
I figure, you know, why bother? Why bother? Yeah, why bother? Why bother uh, reading some intelligently written dialogue when you can hear a stammering, know nothing let's player just talk over it, right? That's what I figure. No, but truly, everybody who is watching this, well, actually not everybody, but a good majority of who, people who are watching this should be able to read by now. And if not, I'm sorry. You can just listen to my voice and enjoy that part. So I figure, you know, you read on your part, and I will talk on mine. Venusaur, also, great character model. Looking excellent. See, it'd be really cool, though, if uh, in a future game, if they made another Wii game for Pokemon. And I am glad that this is, uh, this is kind of like the full official Wii game for Pokemon. You know, Pokemon Battle Revolution came out, and we can't play the attraction yet. We have to go on two mini quests first, but uh, Pokemon Battle Revolution came out, came out, and I was really disappointed with it. The fact that there was no story, there really was no progression. Uh, yeah, you go through all the different coliseums, but after that, big deal. It's just a big battle platform, and it only made up for the lost fact of not being able to battle anybody randomly on Wi-Fi with Diamond and Pearl. That's all it did. But now with Pokemon Black and White having that ability restored, or just having that ability enabled, period, because it never was, you know, there's no need for Pokemon Battle Revolution. None at all. So, I really didn't consider it a full Pokemon game. Ah! I guess that's not the tactic to use for him. See, that's what I'm saying. You gotta experiment a little. Ah! You also have to watch out for their invincibility frames. The game is pretty giving and forgiving with the invincibility frames for both you and your opponent. So if you do get knocked back, don't worry, you're not going to be spammed to death with a move that's super fast. But don't let that get your, your guard down because it can also work against you. As you just saw, my uh, Thunderbolts had no effect while he was still flashing white. Which signifies he's got the invin invincibility frames going. An awesome Scyther. Now I'm just going to throw it out there and guess that Scyther's probably going to want to play Battle. Probably. And I guess we can call it Play Battle because it's not full out, full on battling with all kinds of moves and stuff. And man, that looks great, that Dialga and Palkia waterfall. I know I've uh, walked past it and ran past it and had it in the background a couple of times, but I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but that just looks great. And are you the Spearow that we need to beat? Yes, he did. Oh, okay, wait a second, wait a second. Actually, no, there is another Spiro. Actually, right over by where that Scyther came into Poke Park to play. So let's head back over there and defeat that Spiro. And I guess we could end it off with that. Uh, we are getting pretty far in the video time here. I do not have unlimited time yet. Yet, I say, because I still have hope of being a partner someday, having unlimited video time, but until that happens, we will just defeat Spiro here in a seal game. And this one is something new, something we haven't done yet, and something we probably will have to do in the future, I'm sure. And this is an obstacle hop. Now, this first obstacle hop is pretty simple. All we have to do is jump from each of these drums here to the other one to where Spiro is standing. If you come back and challenge Spiro again after you defeat him first, he'll make you go further in the course. And uh, that was actually something quite interesting that I think I'm going to have to wait until we get into the uh, next video to talk about. But Miyamoto talking about how the hardest thing to do in a 3D video game is jump on a stump. So we'll talk about that in the next episode. Until then, guys, well, we will just be chilling in the Poke Park. See you then.